Okay. All right. Let's see. Fourteen sixty-six. No power. Green light. Thirty milliamps. Not orange light. So it's not charging. No idea. <laughs> yeah, no idea. Hmm. Could be anything. Okay, so it's a 165. It actually looks pretty clean. Let's see what our 342 has given us, and we'll see what our PP bus has given us. 340 is good enough. 8.3, no SMC activity yet. As yet, that's to be expected because it's not powered on. Let's see if we get anything firing up. Nothing at all. Yeah, I guess we'll just take the logic board out and have a look and see what's on the other side. Wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of corrosion going on there. Could still just be a bad DC inboard for all we know. We'll test that. So we're just going to try a different DC inboard. It could be as simple as that, which means I probably didn't need to take those screws out. Um, although, to be fair, it is giving us all the normal DC and stuff, so... Yeah. It's it's not the DC board, it seems. It really just feels like it's just not waking up for some reason. Yeah, let's have a look at it visually, though. Hmm. Okay, there's some sort of flaring around the backlight chip. around one of the resistors and the capacitors. There's just a little bit of like a, um, kind of like when a cap or something burns out, or a resistor burns out, and it causes a uh, discoloration of the board around it. Okay, let's drop on down. Okay, that's interesting. That's been brushed. It's been brushed before I got to it. See how there's dust on top of it? There's this lint and stuff, but it's got a brush effect down there. So that looks manual, so that's been probably replaced. I mean, yeah, there's a bit of... Okay, there's a like corrosion spot there on the SMC, so we might be looking for a, a bug effect. Yeah, there's a bit of... There's a bit of roach poop right there. This is a 1.88, so it's a good one to repair. Like I said, there's, there's bits and pieces around on this board. Oh, I found it. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's bug crap. And that's really not the chip we want bug crap being on. But yeah, I'd say that's it. That's 99% likely our smoking gun. We're just going to do a dry pull. I don't want flux interfering with whatever is going to be found underneath. I think my temperature's a little low. It should actually be about 470. But I'm sitting on 450. It's getting there, but there we go. Okay, so there's still no guarantee that is actually the fault, but it's certainly big enough that it could be it. We'll replace it, clean it up, replace it, test it, see if it's any better. And if it is, then it was the fault. And if it was not, then we'll go searching a little more. I mean, I'll be happy if it is. Something just tells me there's going to be some sort of secondary complication around here. Hopefully that's just my Monday morning paranoia. Pin looks ruined but it's okay. It's the, copper, the copper base is still there and that's all that we care about. No, the pad's gone. So it looks like we're going to have to uh, make a trace or something. Alright, now we've got to change our whole strategy here. Ew. Not that severely. Probably a good thing that the trace came up when it did, because otherwise it might have fatigued off later and it probably would have become a intermittent fault, driven everybody mad. A trace rebuild it is. Now I could actually just put the chip down and then rely on the edge fillet, but I'll try to be a little more civil than that today, since it is Monday. See, is this going to be too thick? Probably is going to be too thick this trace, but we'll see. Ah, oh, no, actually, I can probably get away with that. Gee whiz, how much salt do you want, Paul? OK, 
Okay, that's better. Okay, that's going to be enough to hold it. Funnily enough, when I first was working from 1466s and the like, I did have to just do it without a microscope. And what I'd do is I'd rely on the macro camera, the digital camera, and I'd be relying on the macro quality to guide me. So I would take photos of the area that I was working on and then knowing what I was working on, I could sort of see it even though I couldn't see it because you know, I knew what to be expecting. It wasn't the easiest, but you know, it would take you an hour or so to do a job that will maybe take you five minutes. Yeah, let's have you drop into place. It's a little reluctant on one side. I shouldn't have touched it. There is enough wicking of the solder under here. The reason why it hasn't filleted quite as nicely is because that trace that we made is probably sitting ever so slightly proud, like a spring. But it's okay, the, because I pushed it down, the solder has definitely wicked to the underside of those pads. And there are tiny, tiny fillets there, but anyway. Fingers crossed. Oh, that's much better current. Yeah. Okay, let's check this keyboard. These are just more exit tests. So the tests that we perform to make sure we haven't missed another issue. Okay, keyboard's fine. Okay, that's good. Okay, we're doing good. 30, 30, 35 frames per second, no problem there. Temperatures are coming up into the high 90s, so that's good. As I said in the other stream, if your temperatures don't come up into the high 90s or low 100s, then you've probably got a problem with your MacBook somewhere. If they stay low, down in like 70, 80, then yeah, there's a problem. All right, so this machine, other than now booting with the SSD, seems to be okay. So we can put this one back together completely. Very much a classic how you want, or how we all dreamed that MacBook repairs would mostly be. I'm happy about that. It's the kind of thing you want to start on a Monday with. And this now gets the green tick of fix. So we don't want this color. All right, that's it for me. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one, whenever that will be. Until then, you'll take care. I'll see you later.